Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Seth and welcome back to a another video. I'm once again in Valheim and in this video folks I'm going to show you everything you need to know about taking on Marder, which is the second to last boss in the game uh, Now before I get into it I just wanted to very briefly say to apologize for the break in the videos that is down to getting the AstraZeneca Vaccine which it pretty hard and then I had to go to work the next day and so that kind of pretty much uh, Threw the whole schedule out the window. Uh, I did intend to put a video out on Saturday but that kind of goes to show you how much it set me back by but that's kind of over with and we are now back on schedule so i'm going to start with this first video in which i'm going to show you everything you need to know about the modern boss and of course i'm going to show you a easy way of defeating this boss now the very first thing we will need in order to actually summon the boss is the dragon eggs and uh, you can find these in the snow biome and you can actually see them from quite a distance and this is what I want to show you right here. You can see that little pink light right there that indicates that there is a nest containing a dragon egg. So they do have this pinkish uh, glow to it. One thing to keep in mind is that there will be the frost drakes that you'll have to take care of and be wary of you'll also have wolves as well as the elementals that roam this area so keep that in mind uh, along with this you also have to remember that the eggs weigh an absolute ton so shifting these things about is going to be quite difficult so i suggest uh, looking at getting the eggs once you have found the location of the boss because the boss will be in a mountainous region quite close to the top and so you don't really want to be walking with eggs uphill but if you do want to shift eggs about i'm just going to show you what happens as you can see i'm easily over encumbered with them that means i cannot jump and walking uphill can be a bit of a problem it is easier though to just roll them downhill however as i said the boss's arena tends to be or the boss's summoning altar tends to be fairly high up now one way to move them about is by simply picking it up walking with it as far as you can and then opening up your inventory and shifting them out the inventory as i said it is a lot easier to roll them downhill if you want to carry them from a further distance to the boss arena but i probably recommend just finding the boss's summoning location and working with that because you will have x close to the location where you can summon the boss so i'm just gonna kind of slide downhill carefully here and you can see that the egg has rolled all the way downhill now remember this is what you'll have to go up with the eggs if you want to bring them to this uh area where the boss will spawn from a further distance from another location so how are we going to find the boss well quite simple we're going to look for structures like this so partly damaged buildings and inside you will see this little tablet this is a tablet that we interact with and it will show us the boss location once you have the boss location then i suggest looking for a base location to set up and then slowly prepare yourself for the fight i wouldn't focus too much on the eggs the eggs are fairly easy to find but i just wanted to show this in the video so this is what the boss's summoning altar looks like. It is a circle. Now, that will be at the top of a mountain. Sometimes you will get a bit of uh, space to work with. In my case, I wasn't that fortunate. But what I did right here, for example, is I set down a workbench, put down a roof, and then a chest on top of that. And that is where I'm storing my eggs for the time being. Now, first things first, before we even start summoning the boss, we will need to prepare the arena. Uh... I like to call it the arena, but hey-ho. Uh, so this just will not do for the boss fight. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start digging out this particular section right here. So this is all stone and I need to level it out. Now, I'm going to keep in mind where I had to dig because this is quite important. We will need to dig a trench. There is a limitation to how deep you go. And because I'm already starting to dig here, this is not the area that I want my trench to go into because I want to go as deep as possible with the trench. Also, I have kept all of the stones, so that will help us to level out 
this section. Now I'm going to place down another workbench. This is quite temporary. I'm not really bothered if this takes damage or not. But the reason for this is to allow me to flatten this surface. It's very important. We want the area to be as flat as possible because we don't want the boss landing on a bit of a... Uh, mole hill or whatever you want to call it a little bit of a hill so that she's facing downward because she will be able to use her frost breath whilst you are in a trench you don't want that to happen so very important right there as you can see there's holes all over the area so i'm going to get my hoe out and just pretty much spend a lot of time leveling this place and that's not exactly what i meant to do um as you can see i did previously use the uh ability to raise the land which is how i leveled up the section that was basically a cliff so that is exactly where i'm going to dig my trench by the way because i've not dug downwards i've basically come up with the land to level it out that is where i want to dig my trench where i will fight the boss really uh where the stones were that i used the pickaxe to basically dig into i've had to dig downwards so as a result that area will just be a flat piece of land and as you can see right here i have managed to flatten out the surface now we're going to start with a ring around the boss's summoning altar now if you don't want to use the trench method that's fine i just suggest building a ring around the arena this has two purposes uh one the ai does not want to fall in two ditches if that makes sense it doesn't want to go off cliffs in the game that's how the ai works so basically that means when modern lands you can use this ring around the arena to keep her at a distance and uh continue filling her up with arrows we are going to use the frost arrows as these are the best ones and they do quite a good amount of damage now however i will be using this as a trench as well so i'm just going to go deeper and deeper and deeper uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that when Modder is in the air, she will shoot some sort of ice shards at you. And you can use the ring or the arena itself, the summoning altar, as an object to hide behind. The ring does not take, or the arena does not take uh, damage. So you really want to kind of have yourself uh some protection and the best type of protection is stuff that doesn't take damage it's just as simple as that so i'm going to show you two methods of fighting the boss to be fairly honest and this is what it looks like if you just want to use the ring around the arena as a form of protection you don't have to go as deep as i did it's just uh i would say head height is the deepest you'll want to go but because i'm going with a trench I'm going a bit deeper as well, just, just for that extra added protection. So, I'm just going to go in a straight line now and downwards with the trench. Sometimes we'll bump into rocks that I have not fully mined out. And also keep in mind that this is the area where I did not already dig downwards. And this is actually the area where I used the hole to bring the land up so that I can then later level it. Very important because there is a depth or a maximum depth at which we can dig uh, as far as uh, going downwards. So we want to be able to go as deep as possible. It is quite important. Uh, this will keep us out of the boss's uh, attacks and AOE. Um, so quite important this. Now another thing to keep in mind is that modder can do some damage to the environment. So going as deep as possible is actually beneficial to us. I am going to dig it down in a slope like manner. Uh, it does help with getting back up as you can see right here and I think this is good enough in terms of the length you can go longer if you want it's kind of up to you I'm just showing you the basic principle of how this will work so here we have it uh, I don't want to go too close to the edge I want to give modder sufficient space to land Bear in mind, she is a dragon or a wyvern, and so she's quite big. So we do want to give her the option to move about without being too derpy. Uh, the idea is uh, we don't want her facing downward so that she can hit our uh, things that we'll place down here. That's quite important. So I'm just going to level this up as a ramp. I will use a hoe if I need to. Once that's been done, we're going to place down 
a workbench and this will be the workbench which we can then use to repair our items uh, it will also allow us to build a fob type of uh, structure uh, of course it's going to be partly underground so the idea is we're going to build up a roof that will offer the workbench that sort of uh, protection against the elements and so therefore we will have access to it notice that i have brought the eggs as well so they are behind me so of course above the workbench i will also have something like this where i will have the chest now you kind of want to have it slightly higher than your character's head uh, that way you can also access the workbench so i've had to fiddle about with it uh, i've gone with one full roof tile and then the quarter roof tiles out as you can see right there it does work better that way and then we want to place some chests on top of that that is where we will have loads of things that we store this can be arrows backup arrows uh items uh all sorts of things that we may need for this fight including food and of course i'm also going to have a campfire down as well but i'll show you that later on now Placing the chest down can be a bit derpy, so what you can do is wait for your stamina to regen for a start. And then, remember, you can walk up vertical hills if you sprint and jump at the same time. So that's how that works. So you can place them flush with the floorboards, or you can have the chest hanging out. It's kind of entirely up to you. So once you've got your chest down, you can then start shifting all your materials from around uh, your work area into the chest. So as you can see right here... We're going to put the eggs in there, store them for the time being. And this will also act like a little fob. Now, if you want to go crazy with it, you can actually get the recipe buff as well. I'll show you how to do that, but do bear in mind that modder can, of course, damage structures. It doesn't matter if you make this out of stone or wood. Wood is just as good. It's easier to come... Uh, to get a hold of, to be fairly honest, is what I meant to say. Uh, so this will be our little protective layer we have the ability to now use the workbench because it has a roof over it and we'll place down a campfire if we wanted to cook food and stuff like that we can also get as you can see the fire buff from it as well now i'm going to go one step further and i'll set down a fireplace if you want you can also place down little bits and pieces that will give you the rested buff this isn't um mandatory it's just an option, but keep in mind that the boss may be able to damage these. Just as a thought, but you can get that. You can cheese it that way if you want to. Now, I'm back up at the top. I thought to myself that, of course, Modder is a dragon, so you want to make sure that you have plenty of space for her to land. Uh, I just felt like this section here was a bit too narrow for a dragon, so I'm just adding some more with to this side of the arena it's quite easy to do basically just put your crosshairs on the upper lip of the cliff area and it shouldn't require that much stone to build all the way from the ground now what i've done here for example i have played with this boss i've tested this method out several times uh, of course after each boss fight you will have to do some sort of maintenance and repair right here for example the slip that is damaged from the boss so keep that in mind. But I did place down loads of campfires. And that is because the campfires will help me with damaging the boss. Uh, the other thing is quite important to remember here is you want to have the slope as um, flat as possible. So the slope going up to the boss summoning altar, you want it as flush as possible if that's a... Uh, that's a thing so that we can walk the eggs up now remember we dug downwards so we'll have to jump on top of the summoning arena so how do we get around with this because we can't do this with the eggs well it's quite simple we just look into the direction and then chuck the eggs where we want to uh throw them really so that's how we're going to do that now the eggs are on top of the summoning altar so i'm just going to wait for some stamina to regain i did hear some stuff in the background so and then we're just basically going to run, pick up the eggs from here. We should have enough stamina still to carry them to their final places. So you don't have to do anything else. You just have to have the eggs in your inventory. Look at the little dark uh, holes where the eggs go. Interact with it and the eggs will be placed down. 
Once you're ready, you can then interact with the altar itself, and this will summon the boss. Now, there are two ways you can do this. As I said, you can run around the ring uh, that we just made around the arena and use that for cover. Now, what the boss does, it has several attacks. One will involve her flying and shooting down some icicles at you. Uh, that is what you want to dodge. Then the other one will be for her to land, and uh, she will do a swipe with her claws, her wings, whatever you want to call it. And... Um, as you can see, the icicles hurt a lot, so she hit me right here, but that's fine. She won't do that very often. Don't panic, uh, and by the, by the next hit, if it's going to happen, I will have already healed. This uh, The reason she hit me right here is because I did not pay attention to where she's shooting from so that I angle the boss. Uh, if she's, for example, in line with the trench, she can't actually hit me, so... It does not uh, always work. It's, it's quite important to keep in mind where the boss is and how she's facing you compared to the trench. It's quite an important thing. But as you can see right now, she's doing her uh, wing swipe. She can't hit me. She will do her fast breath. She can't hit me. Uh, so that is why we dug the trench. But over here, example, uh, is uh, she's taking the dot damage from the arrows, but she's also taking dot damage from the fire. And that is why I set down the campfires. Of course, I don't do a lot of damage, but every little helps. This is a boss, and I do want to cheese it. The other thing to keep in mind is that you will have to constantly repair the trench. So this is the other thing that I wanted to show you. Basically, she's throwing the uh, doing a fast breath right there. I moved. I used the trench around the ring to basically stop her from damaging me so she sometimes will do two of these attacks with her frost breath oh she's landed that's not good uh and i'm gonna use the ring around the arena to create a barrier between me and the dragon now kind of uh this is kind of a cheese on how the ai works the ai doesn't really want to fall down a cliff so the ai will see the trench around the arena as a cliff and avoid it and kind of try to path around it and so that is the advantage after she shoots the frost breath at you she will then land and that is when we will use our attacks on her uh as i said she may damage your wooden structures don't panic just keep putting them back up the wooden structure will of course act as a barrier that will take the damage before you so it's very important to keep them uh repaired and uh have them up at all times and finally, the last thing to know, as I didn't mention it in the video, uh, is that I am using the frost arrows, which are easy to make once you have gotten into the mountain biome, and of course, the Draugr bow. And in terms of how many arrows you need to bring, I recommend having around two to 300 arrows at the ready, just to be on the safe side, just in case you miss a couple of shots. With that being said and done, that is pretty much it. This boss fight is fairly easy with this method, and I do hope that you have enjoyed this video and found it useful and informative. If you have, please do not forget to support me in the channel by hitting that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new and haven't already, for more similar content from myself, and if you have just subscribed, why not check out some of my other videos and guides here on this channel, who knows, you might just enjoy them. And of course, for those interested, you can always find me on the Sethtopia Discord. Links to this, of course, you can find down below in the video's description. 